Hi everybody, Mike here from Hebden Photography back once again with another tutorial. This time I just thought I'd share with you how I'm going to recompose this image before I deliver it to the client. Um, Kelly has agreed to let me use this picture and well, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. She hasn't seen it yet, but when we had talked about it we kind of thought um, she showed me another picture and that picture was oriented in landscape. We didn't have enough background because we shot on seamless paper. Uh, we didn't have enough background to um, shoot that way. So I shot it in portrait mode knowing that I was going to have to adjust it later. Now obviously there's a couple other problems. I want to get rid of this soft box and this light stand and in the in the picture so that'll be easy. We'll just crop those out. Um, okay, let's get started. First thing we always like to do, obviously, is duplicate our background layer and work on something else. I come over here, grab my crop tool. I'm going to use a 5x7 orientation in landscape. So if I start right over here, I'm just clicking now outside the border of the picture and drag through the image out through the other side, the crop rectangle won't extend beyond the edge of the image. However, if I go down here and grab this little box, you can see the icon change to double arrows there. I can click now and drag this down and make it much larger so that I can fit our model in. I'm going to leave a little bit of space at the bottom and I like to do that because if I were to commit um, the selection now, the crop now, I might end up with a tiny little white line up at the top. So I like to just click the down arrow once and boom, and there we go and that'll help us avoid that. If I hold the shift key and drag my crop box over I can eliminate most of uh, the equipment on the left. The softbox is gone. Uh, if I were going to try and get rid of that light stand completely, I'd lose a portion of foot and I don't want to do that. So we'll have to deal with that in a different manner, but we'll just take out that softbox. Now if I hit enter, you'll see exactly what's happened here is it's not only cropped the photo, but it's extended the canvas for us. I'll fit that to our screen. And here we are. You can see it's just created another layer. It's extended the lower canvas, but it has a cropped version of our picture placed right on top of it. Now there's a couple of small problems that I have to fix. One being this light, that's an umbrella I think probably, poking out up there. I'm going to use a clone tool for that. And I'll just hold the Alt key here and there we go. That was pretty simple. And I know I bled over the side here, but for our purposes today, that's not too big a deal. Now I could do the same thing over here. It's a little bit more difficult because of the changes in light in the area. So what I'm going to do is I will use, now I'll grab my lasso tool and I'll use my content to wear fill. Just make a selection around this item. And I can do that because, you know, it's small. And I'll go to Fill. And Content Aware is already selected. Say OK. There it is. Now it's gone. I took it out. Now Content Aware Fill works really, really well in tiny, tiny issues like that. Or with textures. If I had a shot of a... Of a, of a field and there was a driveway running through it and I want to eliminate that driveway or eliminate an object in that field. The content to wear fill would create a texture of that grass that would look fantastic. It's a tool that's meant for creating textures and filling based on content. There's not a lot of content in this picture other than our lovely model. If I was to make the selection here just like I would um, if I was using, if I had an area of texture here and go use the content aware fill, 
what it does is it tries, as it's working here, it tries to make a texture out of this and place it in here. So we'll end up with all kinds of different shades and, well, I don't know, let's you'll see it once it happens. Oh, well, there we go. We have definitely made texture. <laughs> I, I suppose there'd be a place for this in some art house wall. Um, it's, de it's definitely neat, but you can see what's happened is it's, it's taken small bits and tried to somewhat randomize or move around and create a texture out of our image and fill the blank space. This is definitely not what we're looking for. We want to extend our image extend just our background and leave our model here. Now we could just select and I don't know how well it's going to work because we're really going to stretch a long way. Edit and Content Aware Scale. So now that's just got our beginning image and we can start to stretch it. Now for small stretches this works fine. It doesn't really stretch our model. It tries not to. Um, it's extending her leg, her lifted leg a little bit. And she becomes very very warped. That leg is just unnatural. There's just, uh, it's not going to work, obviously. But the tool isn't without its advantages. It's actually a genius tool. What I'll do is I'll just stretch a portion of the background. And I'm going to, with my marquee tool selected, start, whoops, start on the outside of the image and go down here and select just the background that I want to extend. I need to create its uh, new a new layer with it though. It has to be on its own layer, which I do by hitting Control J. And there we are with layer one, with just a strip of our background on it. Now, if I were to go up to Edit, Content Aware Scale, I'm only and you can see the box around it. I'm only going to be working with this small portion drag that off the scene and we're good. It's extended our background fantastically. Um, it's hardly noticeable at all. We have a small problem down here where our shadow kind of bends randomly. So what I'm going to do to fix that, you may not have to do this in yours, but I'm just going to bring it over this way a little bit. And if I hit enter or click our check mark, now we're okay. What I'm going to do is mask this off by hitting my add layer mask button. There's my mask right here. Make sure the mask itself is selected so that that's what I'm working on. I'll go over here and grab a brush. I'm going to paint in black because what I want to do is mask away this stuff that I've covered our model with. I'm going to need a larger brush there we are and a hardness of zero and just with the edge of that brush painting along this line it'll f blend it in just nicely for us and we can start to reveal our hands you gotta be careful you don't go too far if we go too far we're gonna bring back our lower layer and bring back our cane. There we are. Very good. I think the one issue we have though is on the tip of our cane now kind of comes down past the shadow area. So I will switch to painting with white and change the hardness of our brush much higher. Bring the size down there we are. Now if I paint in white on this, it'll all disappear. And we will... There you go. Match our cane up with our shadow. Very good. And there you have it. We have taken Kelly and her portrait orientation and changed her to an interestingly composed landscape orientation flatten the image and we'll save it like this and uh, do
do whatever other work we might want to do on it and then we'll be able to deliver it to the client. I hope you learned something and thanks very much. Bye-bye.